I'm Mandira de Serum and I'm based in London. Um, I've been living in London for I don't know how many years but since I was 12. Um, before that I lived in Sri Lanka um, and that's where um, I started I guess my musical journey. I come from a family of musicians um, uh, my father was a pianist and my mum was a flautist and all my extended family were into either music or dance or the visual arts. At a really young age, probably about three or four, I started playing the piano and soon after that I started the violin. My influences are quite uh, varied. Um, I've always had a lot of different interests because of my family and um, I guess the kind of musical scenes that I've been interested in. I've never been fully into one scene I guess. I don't know whether that's a bad thing or a good thing but I've had uh, lots of interests not just in music but also in um, other art forms I guess. Um, so those have um, played into my um, music making a lot. Uh, my main training has always been in classical music so especially when I moved to London with my family um, at the age of 12 I was very heavily into classical music especially chamber music and trying to um, get trained as a solo performer um, but at the same time I was always doing a little bit of improvisation and I used to always um, I used to do um, South Indian dancing as well, and because I, I was very interested in the musical side of that, um, and I had very good teachers who um, also came from musical families actually, so they used to um, we used to often have jam sessions, and um, that was a very different kind of music for me because um, I played the violin in a very different way. And um, so we used to have jam sessions and exchange ideas. Um, so I think somewhere at the back of my mind, that's always kind of feeding in, even if it's not um, conscious. Um, the kind of dance rhythms, dance melodies, um, and the singing, um, Carnatic music. <laughs> So yeah, so well, as I was saying, I was very into chamber music, um, classical chamber music growing up and um, my dream was always to form uh, a quartet, a string quartet, which I did later on after university, after I'd started working already, started freelancing um, as a violinist. I met some similar minded people who were very interested in contemporary um, music like I was and after a while we formed this string quartet and uh, we're doing quite well now and its focus is mainly in contemporary classical music and well 20th and 21st century music um, but also some improvisation and collaborations with um, uh, musicians from outside classical music uh, as well as with uh, theatre companies, dance and visual artists. So we work a lot with other art forms as well. So my string quartet is called the Ligeti Quartet. It's um, 
named after the composer, oh dear, I have to pronounce his name now, Georges Ligeti, uh, a Hungarian composer who was very influential. And um, for me personally, as well as for my colleagues in my quartet, we feel it represents the kind of larger idea, I suppose, of what we want to do um, um, in our in our music making. <laughs> Well, Strange Umbrellas, um, the series, is, they have some really wonderful nights where I've met a huge variety of um, improvisers and also a lot of artists. Um, and um, yeah, and they always have something um, very exciting and original going on. Um, I've always enjoyed those nights. And I think probably uh, probably my first performance with Steve Beresford um, was at one of these uh, Strange Umbrellas nights. Um, and Steve and I, we met a few years ago and we met up um, at my flat to improvise a bit, play and get to know each other a little bit. And we got on so well and ever since then we've played quite a lot together. Um, uh, for me, it um, well, I love playing with Steve. He's great and he's kind of legendary in the free improvisation world. Um, so I've learnt a lot from him, both as a person and musically, I guess. Um, and it's very different from a lot of the other music that I do. Um, I feel completely, well, it's free improvisation, but uh, with Steve in particular, I feel mm, completely free. <laughs> So part of um, being involved more in the um, free improvisation scene in London, I've got to meet uh, a lot of people who I'd, I hadn't met before and I guess been thrown in right at the deep end and improvising with them, like immediately in front of an audience. And that's always been a really exciting experience for me because you're meeting someone possibly who you haven't even uh, you know, talked with before. Um, like Maggie Nichols for the um, Art of Improvisers. Um, I hadn't really met her before, I just vaguely heard of her and it was great um, just recording with her for half an hour or whatever we did. We just 
um, improvised for half an hour and it turned out really well. So next for me, um, I never really know what's coming up next, uh, but certainly um, I've got a lot of work with my quartet and the more classical side of things. Um, and also I hope um, my new band trio with uh, Klaus and Bebe will uh, develop. So that's, it's uh, free, free improvised, but we're also doing some writing. Each of us is contributing a little bit of writing as well to that band. So we'll see how that develops because I think it'll be an interesting combination of people. Um, and I'm also thinking about doing more solo stuff. Um, again, improvised and maybe partially written. Uh, and later in the year, I'm releasing an album with uh, Benoit Delbecq, he's from Paris, and uh, we recorded an album a few months ago and we're just in the process of mastering it and um, yeah so we hope to release that um, later later this year that's again a very different style it's a very meditative kind of style of playing um, a prepared piano and violin and it's quite minimal in a way um, so I'm really looking forward to releasing that and performing more with Benoit the man who made it the most famous comet of all. Thank you. 